Hey guys, Elissa Stone. Gosh, it's been a while. Uh, we did a three-part series most recently with my fitness coach coming off of the fitness competition. So we have a ton of updates to talk about today. Hopefully everybody's been well. Uh, so this most recent weekend, I attended what's called the Ultimate Entrepreneur Camp. And this is with another real estate organization, uh, a national one, uh, well over 30,000 people within the network. Such an amazing experience. What this camp was about is it was mindset intensive and it was also physical fitness. So it was a three-day adult camp, uh, actually in Marble Falls, uh, very close to Austin. And we all went away and we just challenged ourselves, mind and body. So it was a lot of business strategy. It was taking away things that uh, everybody does very successful and maybe things that we can improve upon as well. Uh, there were actually team captains. I was one of the team captains, uh, one of the only female team captains. Yes, I will brag about it because I was proud about it. And uh, I do love the physical fitness side of things. And so my team Oh my gosh, amazing people, um, lifelong friendships were made. Just anybody and everybody within this camp, whether they were on uh, the team directly and or just another entrepreneur there, it was just like-minded individuals. Uh, so we did a lot of team challenges. We did like a rowing challenge, uh, you know, in a boat. We did dodgeball. We did obstacle courses. Uh, you name it, we did it. And then uh, there were several of us that sat around the campfire till late night, you know, having a couple of cocktails and, you know, talking talking about business strategy, talking about life, talking about all the good things and bad things. I just walked away. I mean, I think everybody walked away. I can't speak for everybody, but I think everybody walked away just feeling on top of the world and taking things away from this camp. Uh, the biggest thing that I took away um, that I was excited about as far as a new book to read, it's called a book called Gap or Gain by Dan Sullivan. And uh, of course, I just dug into it as soon as I got back. And the whole premise of the book is talking about, are you living in the gap of life, or are you living in the gain? So what that means, just to really uh, quickly encompass it, are you always worried about what you haven't done in life um, and the goals that you want to accomplish so you're continuously uh, dissatisfied and feeling unhappy? Or are you able to look back at the gain and how far you've come. And it's a completely different mindset. So I'm only uh, chapter two in, but it's amazing so far. And I can see how a lot of the times I live in the gap of life. Uh, so it causes dissatisfaction. And I think sometimes that's positive because that can help you drive even further and quicker towards your goals. But at the same time, I think you have to have that balance and make sure that you live in the gain as well. So completely fascinating book, again, only on chapter two, but I absolutely recommend it. Uh, today, business like usual, jumping in, you know, things are bobbing and weaving and, and new things going on every single day. So I just walked away from a business meeting. Uh, we're looking at doing another business deal and uh, of course doing the creative business structure and creative deal structure with Noble Mortgage. So that was a great meeting with both Daryl and Chris today. Uh, that's real time uh, live information. And it was so funny because I think before I even got out of the office, uh, Daryl with Noble Mortgage, he's the CEO, had posted posted something on Facebook talking about, oh, another creative deal structure with Elissa. And my response was, my response was like, well, of course, I have to live up to the name. It's always about creative deal structure with me. That's part of what this business is about to me. Uh, but it was pretty funny and it made me laugh. And of course, I'm known for that. So another couple of things going on, um, you know, with the multifamily acquisition recently, super excited about that. Um, that's 11 units. And then we're going to be building out the new builds. So in a little over a three month timeline, here's kind of what we've done so far. Uh, this acquisition stood out to me for a number of reasons. Number one, cash flow. Uh, number two, uh, nobody was on an annual lease. It was all month to month. And then there was also the opportunity to uh, renovate the exterior and then do some rent bumps. So in a little over three months, what what we've done is the exterior renovation. Uh, we've done, you know, several make readies as well. And we have been able to get all uh, 10 units on annual leases. And we were able to uh, bump the rents that match the, you know, exterior renovation accordingly. So what that translates to as far as numbers is we've increased the overall rent uh, by about six fifty five dollars per month. And what that translates to when you actually work the numbers through and break it down is that we've increased the value 
valuation of the property by $11,909 price per door. So pretty amazing. So now what we're going to do is start moving into the refi portion where we wrap in those new builds and the new builds anywhere from eight to 12. Um, hopefully the 12 would be better, but um, you know, we have to work through some of those details. And so we're starting that process uh, today, actually. Uh, and then, you know, it will take some time to kind of, you know, work through all the paperwork and all of that good stuff and then transition, get the rates down a little bit and then rope in the funds for the new build. So that's an update on that. Um, I'm heavy, heavy in acquisition mode right now. Um, so for anybody in the real estate realm listening to this, I'm looking for off market deals, kind of those pocket listings. Uh, I've made several calls, had several meetings uh, recently uh, with both people who are wholesaling on the multifamily side as well as brokers. So any hot deals send them my way. Of course, um, you're going to get a little something from it. Of course, that's the way it should be. Uh, but I just wanted to put that out there because it's about networking. And I'll tell you why. A funny thing. I talked to an individual yesterday and we were talking about a, cons a completely separate subject matter. And then I just casually said, hey, listen, I'm in the market. I'm heavy and hot for, you know, off market uh, properties on the multifamily side. If you hear of anything or if you know of anybody, definitely keep me in mind. And ironically enough, this individual that I was speaking with, uh, I didn't even know he was active on the multifamily side. And he said, well, as a matter of fact, like I have, you know, kernel knowledge of a property coming up. I, I can't even remember the unit count. Um, maybe it was like 50 something. Who knows? I don't know. I was just completely shocked that my one sentence opened up this conversation uh, to a potential partnership and a potential deal that is not even live yet. And so that's the power of networking. And even when you're talking to somebody that you think it might be a waste of your time or there's no point in putting something out there, comment on a sentence or two. You never know where it's going to go. I was completely dumbfounded and shocked. And I remember even before I said that sentence on the phone call, is there a reason for me to say this? Like, I, I don't even think this individual dabbles on this side. Guess what? I was shocked. That's the power of networking. And so since then, every single person that I've talked to, I've mentioned the exact same thing. And it's funny, the doors that open uh, when you start putting things out there. So I encourage each of you to do that, whether it be in business, whether it be personal, whether it be about your goals. Very, very um, interesting whenever you just kind of open up and you start networking and put, putting things out there. So an update, um, there's been a video series through Noble Mortgage because they funded uh, this, this particular project. It is the million dollar uh, flip. So I'm super excited about it. We're on the tail end. We're going to be filming the uh, last segment next week. It is under contract. It is set to close on December 6th. So uh, we will see. Um, we're out of option period, which that's a wonderful thing. Uh, we are waiting on the appraisal, uh, but fingers crossed things will go well and we will get to the closing table. I'm excited um, for the person buying this house, uh, partly because I actually got to meet them. It was completely unexpected. Uh, but you know, it's just like when you put so much heart and soul into the projects you do and you get to meet the person that's going to be moving in, to me, that's a really neat thing. Uh, so I'll tell you about it. Uh, we were actually filming, um, you know, the video series and we were at the house and then, um, you know, we heard some knocks on the door and, uh, you know, there were a couple of realtors and, and the individual that actually put the home under contract. And so just by my natural personality and because I'm passionate about what I do, I'm like, oh, let me tell you about this. And here's what we did here. You know, and I'm touring the buyer with her realtors through the house. And I just, it kind of just happened. <laughs> Uh, but I think my passion came out and, um, you know, like many of my rehabs, this particular one, I would absolutely love to move in if it were an option. Uh, I do have to stay within the Fort Bend, Fort Bend County. Uh, and so it wasn't an option, but I just, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the two story skylight and the window wall that opens. And I think all of that came through, uh, you know, in visiting with this buyer. So I got to meet her personally. She seems amazing. Uh, we had things in common. Like we both grew up in a, a very small town and I was like, how do you even know of that? Most people have never even heard of it. Uh, so it was a neat opportunity. So fingers crossed, hopefully everything works out for both her and for me on my side. And uh, it's pretty cool when you get to meet the person uh, buying your rehab that you kind of put your heart and soul into. So I'll keep you updated, fingers crossed. Okay, so on podcast, um, I'm excited about something else. Well, actually two things. Uh, watch for a segment. Um, I got to meet with an apartment owner who I'm um, very active in the market. I'm sure if I said his name, everybody would know exactly 
exactly who he is. Uh, he's got over 4,000 apartments in his portfolio as of right now. And I think it's a comprised value of over 400 million if my numbers are accurate. Uh, but I was able, I of course wanted him to come to the office and do a podcast here. I ended up going to his office and, you know, kind of seeing, uh, you know, all the decor and kind of how he operates on a daily basis and meeting some other team members. So it was a really neat opportunity. Uh, but we'll see if we can like cut and paste a couple of things here and there so you can hear some of his knowledge and uh, some of the things that he's been able to do in his career in a very short period of time. I obviously look up to him from a business perspective uh, because he's where I plan on going uh, and I will be very soon. So I'm very uh, adamant about that. It's in my heart. It's my passion. And I'm a big believer always look up to people who are far more successful than you and have actually been there and done it and try to take away as much as possible as far as information uh, and just, you know, their journey, like how they did it, how they got there, some of the struggles that they went through, maybe any doubts, successes, just really retain all of that knowledge and be a sponge. So it was a really cool opportunity. So watch for that. Another opportunity, uh, I talked to uh, an individual who owns hotels, a very, very successful man, um, really good relationship with him. He's just, he really cares about anybody and everybody in his life, um, but set that apart just on a business level. The man has done amazing, amazing things. And so I sent a text message like two weeks ago and I'm like, hey, would you ever consider spending a couple of minutes with me on uh, my podcast? And he said, yes. So uh, I think he's been out of town, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, he'll be on here. We'll talk a little bit about his journey. I believe if I'm correct, and everything's factual, he got started on the single family side as well and then kind of worked his way up. I believe he owned apartments as well. And then now he owns hotels. And so I would love to hear his perspective on the transition from multifamily to hotel ownership and why he chose that route. Uh, so that's coming up. So stay tuned. Watch for that. All right. So uh, I'm I'm. I wouldn't say failing. Okay. I wouldn't say failing. But uh, we all know I did a fitness competition recently. And it really pushed me to the nth degree between, you know, doing the fitness thing, mama twins, trying to, you know, be the best possible mom I can, running my business. You know, it's just like a lot going on. So did really good at the fitness competition. I was very proud of myself, very proud of the package that I bought, uh, brought to the table or brought to the stage, actually, not table. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and then we saw the interview with my coach. Uh, we did a three segment series. But where I'm going with that is I've completely fallen off the wagon, okay? There were a couple days where I got up, I did cardio, maybe I've made it to the gym once or twice, and I have just been eating anything and everything whenever I want, if I want cocktails, like there's just, I've thrown caution to the wind, right? And I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I work so hard. Uh, like, for example, this past weekend at the Ultimate Entrepreneur Camp, granted, we just finished probably several hours of obstacle courses. And um, you probably can't tell because I'm sitting down, but I can barely move. My entire body is so sore. Like, I have muscles sore on me that I never thought that I even had. <laughs> I pushed myself so hard. And so, like, we finished the obstacle course, and I was super proud of myself. So I'm like, oh, let's have three pieces of cake. And let's, you know, just, like, gorge here and gorge there. And I've really been enjoying my food. I'm not going to lie. Okay. But well, next week is Thanksgiving too. I got to get back on my game. No, I don't have to be in competition shape and eat like I'm about to compete, but I would like to hold myself accountable. And, you know, during the week, eat pretty clean uh, on the weekend, splurge a little bit, have, you know, a couple of adult cocktails and enjoy pizza with the kids. Uh, and then also make it to the gym. I don't have to go five days a week, but you know, if I can hit three or four and stay in good shape, uh, you know, I told you my motto, strong body, strong mind, strong entrepreneur. And I feel like when you're strong on the fitness side and you feel good about yourself and you're eating relatively clean, you feel better overall. And that that falls into each category. You know, it makes you stronger in your mind and then it makes you stronger in your business as well. Uh, on top of mom, right? Mom to twins because I've got to keep my energy up because my six-year-old twins, my goodness, their energy. Whew, I wish I had an ounce of it. So I'm falling off the wagon on that and I'm going to make a commitment here and today. I'm going to get it together right after Thanksgiving, because I'm totally going to enjoy Thanksgiving. I'm going to eat pumpkin pie. I'm going to have stuffing, mashed potatoes, um, wine, you name it. Yes, I'm totally going to enjoy Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. 
and then I'll clean it up afterwards and I'll hold myself accountable. So we'll see how I do after Thanksgiving. And then the last thing that I was going to mention, I always like to give an update on uh, my kiddos, my six-year-old twins, Gavin and Layla. Okay, set their energy aside. I got fired from their after school care. And I'm like, oh no. Okay, let me explain. It doesn't sound as bad as it really, as really as it sounded. So I'm in a co-parenting situation and my kids were attending after school care for two weeks out of the month. So I'd pay for the two weeks and everything's great, you know, so that enabled me to work and, you know, kind of pick them up after the work day. Well, then I get a call and they're like, hey, Lissa, the kids are great. They're having fun. We love having them. But either you need to pay for four full weeks, even though they're here too, or we kind of have to stop this arrangement. And I was like, you know, I go into survival mode. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to work? You know, my kids and, you know, they need to be taken care of and a working mom. And so... I get it from a business perspective. What they're wanting to do is they have two other kids uh, that are on the waiting list that would be attending four weeks out of the month. So from a business perspective, that's revenue to them. Uh, That opens up a space on the bus from, you know, picking them up from school actually two spaces, it picks up two spaces on the bus from picking them up from school, getting them to the after school care. And then for this particular after school care, they get four weeks of pay versus two. So I get it from a business perspective. I get it from a revenue perspective, but I literally got fired and I looked at the budget and I looked at everything. And I'm like, Hey, do I really want to pay for four weeks when they're only there for two? Uh, so I'm on the hunt. I'm figuring out what it is I should do to make this happen. And so I've had some a couple of amazing days. You know, I'm dropping the kiddos off first thing in the morning. Uh, we're up early. And then, um, you know, come 2 o'clock, I'm in line waiting to pick them up. And that's probably about a, I don't know, 35-minute tour by the time you sit through all the cars, pick them up. But... I will tell you, since this happened, it's unfortunate I'm going to have to find other care. But since it's happened, like I've got to spend a couple of really cool days with the kids. Um, We went grocery shopping together. Um, You know, like we were playing at the house. We did some extra cuddle time. So it's been a little bit of a blessing in disguise because I just I got to spend some extra hours with them. I wish kind of from the bottom of my heart I could do that with them every single day. Uh, Unfortunately, that's not an option. Um, I am a mom. I am the sole income producer. And I have to make sure that I'm putting in a good day's work uh, to make things happen and provide for my family. But uh, I will cherish these couple of days. And then you go into action mode, right? Something happens. You figure it out. You got to find a solution. Uh, I think I have one. We shall see. I've been making calls like crazy, Uh, you know, putting the word out there, networking, and uh, we'll see how it goes on the next podcast. Hopefully everything is going well with all of you out there. Um, moving along, trucking along, staying positive, had a couple of bad days, but then I get back up and uh, I'm excited for what the future holds. So I will catch you on the next episode. See you soon, guys. Bye.